Hello, so I'm Marguerite Humeau. I'm a speculative designer from London. Uh, I graduated from the Royal College of Art in uh, 2011, so a year, a year and a half ago, uh, from the Design Interaction Department led by uh, June and Rabi. Uh, so the project I will present you today was actually started as my graduation project, and since then I've been working on it, so since two years now. It's called Proposal for Resuscitating Prehistoric Creatures. And um, basically my idea was to resuscitate the sound of prehistoric animals by reconstructing their vocal tracts, uh, which I found was actually problematic uh, from the scientific point of view, because since the vocal tracts, so the lungs, uh, trachea, larynx with vocal cords and resonance cavities, they are all made of soft tissues, so they don't fossilize. So um, the only thing we've left uh, are the, the fossils, the surrounding bones. So all of the inner parts, so the vocal tract itself, had to be redesigned. So in October 2010, I sent a letter to maybe over 100 scientists, explorers, zoologists, paleontologists. Um, it was starting like, dear professor, I'm Marguerite, and uh, I want to create an opera of prehistoric creatures. Can you help me? Uh, <laughs> So basically, all of the replies I got were really supportive, but they were saying, yeah, from a scientific point of view, it might be problematic, but for me as a designer, actually, it was a fantastic design challenge. So I, worked, I decided to work on three different animals. This one is a walking whale. Uh, yeah, whale used to walk. I didn't know that, 50 million years ago. Uh, Mammoth Imperator, uh, which is more familiar to most people. And Terminator Pig, uh, which is actually called Antelodont, as known as Terminator Pig. I kept all of the real scientific names. Uh, Terminator Pig was a bit more problematic for me because we don't have so many fossils left, so some of the skulls I also had to redesign. So this is a fictitious skull, uh, so I could base my research on something. So what many, uh, what many scientists actually uh, told me is that maybe something that could be uh, good for my project would be to actually start hunting their living descendants so I could actually, uh, for example, for the mammoth, if I could find an Asian elephant and, um, and make a 3D model of it in, in some way and extract the vocal tract, I could maybe remodel it inside of the skull of his ancestor. Um, and I did the same for the walking whale. I found um, a porpoise um, and a, a white boar for terminator pig. So that was a start. And then I read this very interesting story. In 1912, a novelist told the Chicago Tribune uh, that he had been guest at a prehistoric banquet in St. Petersburg, uh, where he had been served mammoth steak. I thought, wow, that's really amazing. And actually, in the same week, I read on the news that this French, French explorer had found um, a, mammoth, a baby mammoth called Yuba, completely preserved in the permafrost. I thought, okay, uh, he's French, I really have to meet him. So I went to Paris, we met, we discussed. It was, um, it was really interesting. This, all these mammoths have actually great names, like this one is Dima, there's Luba, Blue Babe, uh, Yarkov, still in his ice block. Um, so Bernard Big uh, was really helpful with me, actually also provided me with some data from the mammoth itself, like the, the real um, woolly mammoth, so very helpful. And then I had to, so this, I could, with this I could kind of speculate on what the resonance cavities could be like. But for the larynx it was much more complex because it's a lot of muscles and bones and it's like, okay. So in March 2011 I met with a kind of modern Frankenstein. He's um, a scientist from London and he grows vocal cords. Uh, we had very long discussions. It's true, it's a true story. <laughs> um, and he told me, Margaret, you're, you're trying to copy something that doesn't exist anymore and it's really complex, so why don't you start just designing something like a larynx with vocal cords, it would, which would have the same function but maybe not the same shape. So that's what I did. It was, yeah, again, very interesting story. And this is the final result. So on the left you have Terminator Pig, you can see the big uh, white things or the resonance cavities which I 3D modeled and then uh, with a five axis machine I, I sculpted them. Um, and then on the right you can see the redesigned larynxes, so uh, I used the right length for the trachea and then for the vocal cords the same. 
So th these are like Soder's compressed air, which is um, basically like making the vocal cords vibrate, and that's where the sound comes from. Um, this is Terminator Pig again. Uh, this is Lucy on the left. It's another animal I've been working on, also more as a prototype. Uh, it's a small hominid. On the right, you have uh, Mammoth Imperator. They are all uh, made one-to-one -one scale, so the mammoth is uh, three meter high. Uh, that's a close-up of, of the larynx. And uh, that's the walking whale. It's um, five meter high. So basically, this project, it became a kind of opera. So I also designed a brain for these beasts um, so they could, they could evolve again. And then, um, I, so I also work on this small hominid, which is a piece, basically, it's easier to tour because it's smaller. Uh, the opera is like uh, 10 big crates I have to carry everywhere. So. And then th there's a book that I've published as well. Uh, with all of my letters and correspondence. I'm also writing stories for magazines, like for Tar Magazine, which will uh, actually be published in April. And now I'm also working on this project with uh, a Dutch musician called uh, James Zhu. And uh, we're doing another, like we're basically doing another sound piece. Uh, this one talking about the beast trying to evolve. So it's like a saga. So we designed a libretto for it as well. It's a saga in three acts. And... Um, so the main characters are the beast, and James Wynn is uh, basically yeah, not really interacting, but he's mixing them live. And um, yeah, of course, I, I work as a team, so I'm not on my own. I have a lot of people helping me, so I just wanted to, uh, to, to say that. And um, the way I see this project is uh, basically I'm working on a design trilogy, and this trilogy, so this was the first chapter, and I'm trying to use design as a way to reconnect uh, and reenact or communicate with unknown or extinct or unre unreachable forms of life. So the second chapter is about uh, yeah, communicating with almost aliens. I believe there are uh, creatures stuck in this lake in Antarctica, in the Vostok Lake. We don't really know for sure, but maybe. And uh, so my project will, will be about that. I have a solution in Geneva like, uh, in the end of the year, actually. So. Um, just, yeah, watch out for more information. <laughs> Thank you very much.